like him? Does she even like him? I almost feel like she hates this man, though, to be honest. Like, because I, I don't understand. Ah, I felt that in my soul. Even when they said, the producer was like, oh, don't cry. I felt that in my soul. I was like... Hi beautiful people, welcome back. If it's your first time, my name is Talia Dewali and this is This Fight Them. Today we're talking about Love After Divorce episode 7. Oh my god, we are halfway through people. There's 14 episodes, there's only the couples or the divorcees have only been in the house for 4 days now. So it's coming to an end. But we're not there yet. So if you've been following, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I post new videos. And let's just dive on into it people. So last we left off, Ricky and Harem were officially a couple, um, and it's no different. Day four starts, and they are kind of already like in the honeymoon phase. You know, they're cooking together in the kitchen. They're really like all up on each other. Like these people are in love, and yeah, <laughs> I I love it for them, <laughs> but I'm also worried for them. But it doesn't matter. This is what they came to look for, so I I'm okay with it because this is what they came to look for. So. We keep moving on. Tom out of nowhere asks Harem on a date in the kitchen in front of uh, Dewey, Jerome, and Jimmy. And I was like, Tom, what are you doing? You know she's already happy with this guy. Why? I guess he just wanted to do it just to get it off his chest and so he could say, you know, at least I asked her out. It's not a question of, oh, had I known or could I would have should her, you know, so he just did it. Obviously she said no. And um, he kind of joked around about it and said, yeah, he just wanted to do it and rip the bandit off. But I'm pretty sure he was a little salty about it because I think he really did like harem. Sora, oh my God, Sora broke my heart in this episode and we will get to it. But she comes in and as soon as she walks in, Tom was looking at her and like he could tell that something was wrong. She had been crying apparently, um, I think, I guess all night and all morning. So he goes up and he gives her a hug. I was like, oh, Tom, oh, Tom, that was so nice. I, Tom is very observant because um, he also noticed later on when Dewey came in and Dewey was upset. And I, I think I really did not notice that about Tom. So big ups to him, appreciation, um, nod to Tom because that was really nice of him. Harren tried to you know console Sora and I was like Harem mm -mm -mm -mm, back off back off back off back off because you're part of the love triangle that is making her sad and I don't mean that in like oh no we can't talk to you know I mean like you are part of the sore thumb Sora will not want to interact with you at this point in time so just back off let her read and later on you guys can talk you know of course Sora was like no no I'm fine kind of like moved off you know and I get it I'm not obviously I'm not blaming Harem for falling in love with the guy right i'm just saying if you know that you're the guy that you're the girl that the guy she likes chose just respect the space just give her time to get comfortable with the idea that that's what happened you know uh jisoo then takes sora outside for a chat and benita tags along they kind of speak about how harem knows what she wants and typically and just went for it directly um benita does get emotional because she thinks that Sora is a wonderful person and kind of like wishes that Sora could show um all of herself to the guys the way she does with the girls because Sora is very confident with the girls like she's on it she knows what it wants but when it comes to guys she's actually timid and she falls back Sora then confirms that she is scared of rejection and I think she touched on this after doing the confessional after the date with Jimmy and she said that um, she's very insecure about that and about being rejected by people. So I then pulls Ricky, who was who has just been oblivious at this point. But you can't tell me that every time that Sora has pulled you for a chat or stuck beside you, you thought it was just friendship. Anyway, she pulls him aside and she has a real chat with him. She's like, she tells him that she's been interested from day one. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that. And I'm like, shut up, Ricky, just shut up. <laughs> tells him that she's not trying to break up his relationship. Of course, that she just wants feedback. He tells her that he had no idea that um, all the subtle things that she was doing um, were her telling him that she likes him. And I agree. Look, I, I get it. We see it because we can see it. But I agree with him to a certain degree. He said he didn't know. But um, I think that he should have known on some level. And I think that she should have been more vocal about her intentions with him. Text comes in um, that they're going out on group dates. It's going to be basketball 
or our Korean board games. Ricky chooses basketball without, with, he didn't even ask Harim, uh, what would you like to do? He just sees basketball, goes and stamps his name on it. And I was like, huh, hmm, that, that was a bit of a, it was a bit of a flag. I don't know what color it is yet because my first thought would be, ooh, let me find out what she would like to do and let's see if it's a line or if it's what I want to do or if it's not, if I'll be interested in doing the other thing with him or her. But he did it and so for me it was a flag. I don't know what color, I don't know if it's white, red, green or yellow. I don't know, <laughs> but it was a flag. Jimmy then goes to get Ejin and tell her the board is up for us to choose our group dates. What do you want to do? Brings her down and they both stand board games together. You can see the different things. Jimmy has always been very attentive to people, regardless of if he's in a relationship with them or not. And I get that. But it's like he wants to be with this girl. So obviously he's going to pick her and they'd already agreed that they will stamp together. And I feel like Ricky and Harem had agreed as well that they would stamp together. It is telling of the kind of relationship that Ricky is going to have with Harem. I don't say, my hands are up, my hands are up, people. I'm not saying it's good or bad or it's, or it's going to break them up. I'm just saying it's a flag. Sora chooses basketball. Why she did that, I'm not really sure. I think she was doing it because Ricky was there. And it's like you've already had a conversation with him and you know that there's nothing there. So why would you put yourself in his space? It's just painful and unnecessary. But she chose basketball. Jisoo chose board games to follow Jimmy, I think. Jerome gets Benita. You see, you see how it works, people? You see how it works? Jerome gets Benita and they both stamp basketball. Before, while, while they were coming down the stairs, he was like, oh, there's basketball on board games. And when she said it's basketball, he was like, basketball today, it's too hot. I think Jerome should have just come out and said, I'm not good at basketball. If it's what you want to do, I'll come along, but just know that I suck. Honestly, it's better to get ahead of these things before it's too late. Uh, but wh when he said it's too hot, she was like, okay, you do you do uh, board games then. And I'm like, why does she keep trying? Why does she constantly keep um, trying to push him away? If you're not interested, just say it. Say, I'm not interested in you, Jerome. Like, at least not like that. You know, be direct. Don't string him along and then dump him, you know, at the midway point. But you guys will think that I have a vendetta against Benita. So let's just move on. Mm -hmm. Do we choose board games to be close to Jisoo, of course. And then Tom chooses board games, I think because he just didn't want to be in the same space with uh, Dewey, no, with Ricky and Harem. <laughs> Harem chooses basketball without even knowing she saw Ricky's name and just stamped it on there. She jokes about it later on and I was like, you know what, that's love for you. I see it, I felt it, I get it, you know? Um, so it, it ended up being 5-5 five, five in each group, which for me was ludicrous because there's going to be one man out. It's just going to happen. There's going to be an odd person out, if not in one, in the other. I would rather be the odd person out playing board games, though, than basketball. Anyways, while they get ready, Harim apologizes to Sora about the whole Ricky situation. And uh, they have this conversation in the bathroom, I think? I don't even know. Yes, in the bathroom. And then Sora asks a question that I was asking a couple days ago. It's like, um, a couple weeks ago, I was like, how can you go from liking Dewey and being all all out for Dewey to the point where the girls did not even want to talk to Dewey because you'd stamped ownership on him to liking Ricky in the next breath, you know? And that's what I asked. And it, it, it dawned on me that she always liked Ricky, but because she didn't think that anything was going to happen with Ricky or because that tea time date did not go the way she was expecting it, she kind of fell back on a game plan and Dewey was the safest game plan. So she basically used Dewey. She used Dewey because... Even in um, Is She the Wolf, which I'll be doing a review for, um, Honoka was doing the same thing with Taiju and messing with Tom Tom Tomoki's feel and feelings because she's trying to get Taiju jealous. But I digress. <laughs> so she is doing, let's call it spade a spade. Harim did that. You know, it worked out in her favor. She's with Ricky now and she seems to be focused on Ricky. So I can respect that. She has chosen her guy and she's sticking to him. She's not like flip flopping, you know, yet. Uh, so basketball time, Ricky and Benita are great. Um, Ricky is actually really almost pro level. He's so good. He made every shot that he took. Benita was also good. Jerome offers to pick Benita up so that she can dunk and she says no. And it's like, Jesus, how many more shots is she going to take at this guy? But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. The MCs made a comment about Benita and Jerome. And um, 
with the way she addresses Jerome because she thinks that she's older than him. So she almost addresses Jerome like he's her younger brother. And I agree, I've seen that. You know how she's been trying to use the excuse? Like, she, she used location as an excuse. They live in the same bloody state. Then she's using age now as an excuse. And we all know that today was the age reveal. So we'll, we'll get to that. But she does kind of talk, talk down at him. And I don't like it i like benita on her own but whenever you put jerome in the situation i want to slap this girl <laughs> she's my senior and i have to respect her but i swear to god i want to slap her most of the time but moving on so Ralph was miserable absolutely miserable and watching her was god wrenching it was so bad so very bad because obviously benita and jerome are, are coupled up ish and then Ricky and Harem are coupled up tight. And then she likes Ricky. So to watch him, you know, be very attentive and, you know, all about Harem, I would never sign up for that. If a guy that I liked um, coupled up with another girl and there was an activity going on, you can best believe that if they're going west, I'm going to go east. If they're going north, I'm going to be south. In fact, I'm going to leave the globe altogether if it was a choice. Why would I put myself through that heartache? What, like being around him is going to somehow magically make him notice me and like me? Bullshit. So why Sora did this? Why she chose this for herself? I don't know. And to top it off, she's terrible at basketball. You know, I thought maybe she was going to be good at basketball. She's going to show her skill and skills and dazzle them. But this girl sucked. She tried and tried and tried. And she couldn't make one shot. Sora was terrible. And I felt so bad for her. I wish that it was 6'4". So at least even if Tom or some of the, one of the other guys, I think Tom is the only kind of other person because Jimmy is set on Hijin and Dewey is set on Jesus. So Tom is the only other non, you know, committed one right now. If he had been there, at least there would have been interaction between him and Sora. But it just, it was just a terrible day for Sora, to be honest. During her confessional, when she started crying, and I don't mean, I don't mean just tears, but she, her head was down and she was weeping. Oh my God. Ah, I felt that in my soul. Even when they said, the producer was like, oh, don't cry. I felt that in my soul. I was like, no. I'm not really sure what the connection is, but I really, really like Sora. So seeing her in pain, God, that, that did me in. That did me in. So we move on to the Korean board game group, and they had two games, uh, Dalgona and Yunori. I think it was Yunori. Yeah, Yunori. I don't know these games, especially the Yunori one. I didn't really know that one. But they started with it first. And Dewey described, Dewey was the one who told everybody the rules. He went really into detail, kind of got lost in giving details. He really loves board games. I love a guy that loves board games because I love board games. So I was on board. And if you're willing to tell me the rules of the board games, I'm willing to play. Um... I don't know that a lot of people, I don't know that Jisoo appreciated it. I think he was trying to, uh, you know, impress her. I don't think she cared. She really doesn't see him, which is unfortunate. Teams were formed. It was Dewey, Jisoo, and Jimmy, uh, and then Tom and Heejin on the other team. Jimmy's face when Tom sat beside Heejin, oh my God, I was laughing. I had to pause and I was laughing for like 30 seconds straight. He was not impressed at all. All. And then when they started playing and they were winning and they were tapping each other, whispering into each other's ears, ah, Jimmy wanted to die. <laughs> it's not funny. I tell you, when Tom leaned in and whispered into Heejin's ear, Jimmy wanted to drown him in that pool. If they had left him alone, he would have dragged Tom to that pool and stuck his head on that water. It was so bad. I felt for Jimmy, but you know what? It's a game. Let them play. He just was enjoying herself, so shouldn't that be enough, you know? But I get it. He hasn't really gotten a firm answer from Heejin about where they are or how she feels about him. So he doesn't know where he stands yet, and it's one of the most uncomfortable things um, to have to go through where you like somebody and you can't even tell if they like you back and they won't say either. So I get it. I get it. Then they now switch to Dalgona, and if you've watched uh, Squid Games, you know which da you know what Dalgona is. It's the sugar one where they have to break the shapes out of the candy without breaking the candy itself. So they didn't really show us much about that one. Dewey tried to help Jisoo when she was trying to melt her sugar, and I think they mixed something else in there. I can't really remember right now. Her sugar thing when she was melting it was hot. He offered her a napkin, but she didn't even she didn't register that he spoke to her at all. And then Jimmy was like, "Oh, I'll hold it for you," and she immediately gave it to him. And I just felt bad for Dewey. God, there are gonna be so many broken hearts at the end of this thing. It's kind of it's kind of sad. 
But he even mentioned it in the confessional. Oh no, I think it was when he was talking to Tom. I don't know. He said it though that she doesn't even see him. That she only responds to things when it's Jimmy. And I felt so bad for Dewey, you know. It was so sad. Um, on the side, Jimmy he Jin was not happy that Jimmy was helping Jisoo out with her sugar melting thing. And I was like, oh my god. She said that she doesn't mind if he's nice to other men, but she doesn't like it when he's nice to women. And the way she said it, I was like, oh, flag, flag. <laughs> I get what Heejin was trying to say. I just thought that the way she said it was a little flag inducing, man. I just can't say it. Um, then they go in and they get a Korean food party. Of course, they have to cook. They have to cook their own dinner, but they give them all the groceries for it. Jimmy's apron had me dying in stitches. It was giving Miss Delphire vibes from here to the wazoo. Loved it. it. It made me laugh so much. I was so excited to see him in that apron, honestly. Uh, while they're having dinner, they get the text that they can now reveal ages. And man, was I surprised. So, on the women, we have Heejin, who's 36. Jisoo, who's 32. Jisoo is the youngest person in that house. Benita is 37. Harim is 35. And Sora is 33. Sora was also born in December. So she's like my... Oh, I wonder if her birthday is the same as mine. Hercules, Hercules! Maybe this is why I like Sora. She is definitely my sister from another mother. I love this girl. The fact that we're born in the same year, in the same month. It was meant to be. We need to be friends. Universe... Make it happen. Sora and I need to be friends, honestly. And then for the guys, Tom, we have Tom. <laughs> Tom is 44. Ricky's 39. Dewey is 39. I did not expect that. Jimmy is 38. Did not expect that at all. And then Jerome is 46. Jerome is the oldest person in the house. I was blown away by that. Honestly, was not expecting him to be that old. So now, people, now... When you bring Benita into the situation thinking that, oh, she's older than Jerome and that's why she treats him like her younger brother. He's 46. She's 37. He almost has 10 years on this woman. Almost, not quite. So, um, what other excuse are we going to find now, Miss Benita? What other excuse? Well, she proves me right in the next breath because Jerome tells everybody about his entertainment background. He tells them who his ex-wife is and everything. And he brought that up because he said that he knows he has a jovial nature, but he, with that kind of background, people might think that he came here just to get back into the limelight, and that's not true. He came to find a wife. He came to find a partner, and that's what he's truly looking for. So he tells them all of this just to get his story out so that people know. But as soon as he said that, you could, or, you could see Benita's mind already working on her next excuse. Now, Benita says in the confessional that she's not willing to be in the limelight because she knows that with his background in entertainment and the fact that he was popular, it will bring a lot of attention to them as a couple. And I'm like, Benita, you came on a show on Netflix to find love and you're saying that you don't want attention. Yes, maybe you don't want attention, but you knew that you would get it to a certain degree by coming on a show that is... Mm -hmm. Ooh, sir. Ah, there we go. I needed to calm down because she was pissing me off. I can't, I can't, I can't stay in this bubble with Benita anymore. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I gotta set myself free. I just gotta go. So after dinner, um, a few of them gather in the living room. They were all trying out drinks and there was a particular one that Harim had not tried yet. Harim was sitting on the other side with Ricky beside Heejin while Jimmy was seated beside Jisoo. So he asked Harem, have you tasted this one? And she said no. So he took the drink, stood up, and went to sit in the empty seat beside Heejin, which was in between Ricky and Heejin, to give Harim a taste of the drink. But then ends up being beside Heejin, which is what he wanted. So obviously Jisoo caught, caught, she caught up on all of that and it really, I guess she got upset again. She went outside to call her mother or her sister, her friend. She went outside to call somebody and lament about it. I really wasn't paying attention after that. Benita then says right in front of Jerome that she said there wasn't a younger guy available. And I'm like, bitch, what are you looking for? What exactly are you looking for? So I think he asked her. So I'm, I'm pretty sure he did. Yes. Jerome then pulls her out for a seat, for a chat. And then he asks her, did you want a young guy? And then she says no. So why would you say things that you know will hurt him? Why? 
Why? Why? What did he do? It, it, does she even does she like him? Does she even like him? I almost feel like she hates this man, though, to be honest. Like, because I, I don't understand. I don't understand. She goes out of her way to do things to test him and make, make him hurt. And I don't know why. It seems like a personal vendetta to me at this point. And unfortunately, the fool is in love with her. So there's nothing that we can do about it but watch the train just go down that rail and derail and crash. Like, there's nothing else we can do. And I'm so pissed off about it. You know what? Fine. Anyways, he's telling her that, um... He was jealous that she had a long time with Tom the night before because she and Tom had talked apparently for hours on end. And he straight up tells her that I like you, I'm interested in, um, in you. I feel like he was waiting for the Adrian will so that it checks off all her excuses at this point because location and age were the main thing. And now he's coming out and he's telling her. But for me, that conversation, it feels like she friend zoned him. She said that she was getting friend vibes from him. So um she didn't really tell him i'm not interested in you yet but she definitely friend zoned him so i don't know if he's still holding on to hope at this point but it's like jerome get a clue it's not happening so let's just skip a bunch of stuff we're going to go to jimmy and heejin um he tells her again that he's interested she finally opens up to him about her concerns about him being very you know over caring or not even over caring just caring to women and um it gives an example about the beach when they were at the beach and Jisoo hurt her leg and he was like, oh, do you want to pick it back, right? And I get it. Girls can instantly feel like you're flirting with them in that because it's so hard to differentiate between um, a guy that just is attentive and caring um, from a guy that is actually, you know, flirting with you and interested in you. After that, he thanks her for being able to open up to him about that kind of situation because it is, it is very sensitive, right? So he appreciated her telling him about it and now it's something that he can watch for. Everyone enjoys some pool time. And then Ricky takes his girl upstairs and to his room, man. All roommates decided to come in and basically interrupt them because they were on the bed. They were cuddling up. They were being very cozy with each other. And then, <laughs> do we? No, Tom walks in first and says, oh, sorry, he goes in for a shower. Then Dewey walks in. He was just so flustered. Poor Dewey. Maybe it's the fact that there were people on the bed, you know, being cozy and every and lovey-dovey. That just threw him off. In the dead of the night, they now showed Tom and uh, Benita going outside to have a chat. In the dead of the night, everybody was sleeping and they were having a chat. So I guess that door is fully open. I want Benita to find love. And if she does not think that it's with Jerome, then she should set him free. This is what they're all here for. I want all of them to match up in some way, shape or form. And if it's not who you are currently with, set them free. The way that Jisoo has told Dewey that she likes somebody else and she doesn't see anything happening with them. Dewey decides that he's still going to hold out hope for her. You know, that's his personal choice. But Jisoo made it clear. The way that um, Harim told Dewey that it's not happening between them, she is with Ricky. Yes, she did string him along and she used him, but eventually she let him go. Like, be clear and tell them. Don't hold on to things. They are only here for seven days. They've already used up four of those days. It's almost done. Why would you string somebody along for this long and then not let them know? And again, I gotta, I gotta give her grace. I, I'm trying. I'm really trying, people. Because it is seven days and it's only been four days. It's not really enough time to know if you want to live with somebody for the rest of your life. Which makes me wonder why. It's only seven days, but it is what it is. Tom was saying that he's more co most, most comfortable with Benita and he would like to go out with her. And she, she agreed that she wants to go out with him. Next episode, and it was a guaranteed one-on-one -on -one date. So they will have to pick um, who... I forget what the scenario is, but the whole thing is that it's guaranteed one-on-one -on -one dates between them. So yeah, it's definitely getting interesting. I'm still stuck on the Dewey, um, not the Dewey, the Benita Jerome situation, but I'm trying to just hang on. But I feel like Jerome is stuck on Benita, and if it's not Benita, he's not going home with anybody, which is kind of sad because the whole point of this was that he wanted to find somebody. But it is what it is. You guys send out prayers to my girl, Sora. She's not having a good time in that house right now. It's it's not looking good. It doesn't look like she'll find somebody. But again, there's still two days. So there were three days. So we just have to wait and see what happens. But I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm anxious and excited to see who the final couples will be. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I post new videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.